I want to tell you a little bit about dementia. The term is often misused. In this pie chart, only the two gray pie wedges are not involved with either vascular dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is the biggest part of dementia in America, but I would say that it is almost always accompanied by vascular dementia and clogging of the arteries that supply the brain. Good blood perfusion to the brain is essential for us to think. It's one of the reasons why exercise, physical exercise is really helpful. The incidence of Alzheimer's disease is risen alarmingly and is forecast to continue rising alarmingly. If you take a good look at the American diet and the, how can I say gently, the junk food diets around the world, things are only going to get worse unless people eat better. And also, there are other ways too besides nutrition. This is kind of a sad picture because it shows the before and after of Alzheimer's disease. On the left, we have a normal brain on the top. And on the right, you see a brain shrunken to about half its size. What has happened is that the brain cells, the neurons themselves, have died, half of them. This is called neurodegeneration. And neither drug used for Alzheimer's disease slows or stops or reverses this neurodegeneration. But we do have tools that can help with that. What we'd like to do is protect the cells in the brain so that they don't die off. And when do you start this process? Prenatal would be a good time. <laughs> through pregnancy, through childhood, through early life, midlife, and late life. So wherever you are, you can benefit from protecting your brain cells. We'd like to have as many left as we possibly can. Now the bottom shows, it's a PET scan, and it shows glucose activity. Glucose activity is more where you see the yellow and the red. Where there's yellow and red, there's more glucose activity. But sadly, look at the Alzheimer's brain on the right, and you see that there's very little activity. And this is reflected in the eyes of those with Alzheimer's disease, with advanced Alzheimer's disease like this. One of the reasons why there's no glucose activity there is, of of course, because of tau tangles and Alzheimer's plaques that I'll mention more about, but also lack of circulation to the brain. And we can greatly aid this circulation to the brain. Vascular dementia is a big contributor. I'll describe that more. And we can reverse vascular dementia, or rather, you can. <laughs> Plant diets. This is an assembly, a conference, about plant diets. So I found a 2019 study here, uh, among many others, that talk about the parts of a plant diet that can be beneficial. Polyphenols are a large class of plant chemicals, including flavonoids, flavones, uh, the still beans such as resveratrol. It's a huge class of anti-inflammatory and antioxidant chemicals in plants. Now, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory mean less brain cell death. So that's one of the ways that these plant diets help. Also, antioxidants fight the free radical damage that destroys the brain cells. So why not have some vitamin C and vitamin E available to the brain? Vitamin E cannot work but once without vitamin C to come and recharge it. Then it can work again. Then you need vitamin C again to recharge it. So the two work together. Carotenoids are the colorful pigments that you see in fruits and vegetables and even yams. These carotenoids are tremendously effective in protecting the brain. They are fat-soluble antioxidants. That means they're very effective in the cell membrane that covers each cell in the brain. And those membranes are often attacked by free radicals, and when they're damaged, or the mitochondrial membranes inside them, then the brain cells can die. Carotenoids are very protective. And where are they found? Fruits, vegetables, and some roots. When they did post-mortem studies on Alzheimer's brains, they found that the Alzheimer's brains had lower levels of beta carotene and lutein and other carotenoids. Did you know that lutein is a carotenoid most accumulated in the brain? 
also in the retina of the eye. And it's an antiomer, zeaxanthin, is also found in the brain and the eye, very protective. And our brains would love to accumulate these carotenoids so that we can protect ourselves from free radical damage. Those fuzz balls in the picture are called amyloid plaque or senile plaque. And they're produced over a long period of time, many decades. Another reason why I'd like people to start early in their defense of their brain. They're involved in about 80% of dementia cases. Do they cause dementia? It's an interesting question. We're not sure. But they certainly are existent more in Alzheimer's brains than not. But there are some very normal old brains with Alzheimer's plaques where there is no memory or cognition problems at all. These are clumps of protein that occur between the nerve cells. They interfere with nerve transmission and they're very toxic to the brain, killing brain cells. Now, tau tangles occur inside the brain cells and they are also very toxic. Hyperphosphorylated tau proteins is the big name. We just call them tau tangles usually. The two pictures on the right and the left are pictures of the same thing. You see what I mean? On the left, we have lots of foods, heavy and saturated fat and animal fat. And on the right, we have the result of those foods, clogged arteries. When you eat a diet high in saturated fat, and many American diets are very high in saturated fat, you get an increase of cholesterol in the bloodstream and you get increased production of amyloid plaques in the brain. The higher the cholesterol, and it gets kind of technical as the cholesterol contributes to the lipid rafts on the membranes of the brain where the transmembrane proteins go through, like the amyloid precursor protein, and it creates more amyloid plaque. Good idea to keep your cholesterol lower anyway for heart disease and stroke risk. Arterial blockage is very common. You've probably heard of some people who have carotid artery blockage in their carotid arteries, sometimes 70 or 80% occluded. This means that very little blood can get up to the brain. If you eat a diet lower in saturated fat, you actually can start reducing the blockage in your arteries. And later in the conference, uh, Dr. Esselstyn will come and tell you about how to reverse this clogging in the arteries, and I'm tell you about it here too. Vascular dementia, which I've mentioned, is really the accumulation of tiny strokes. So first, you eat a lot of saturated fat, and then you get a lot of plaque built up on your arteries, and then a little bit of the plaque breaks away and plugs a tiny arterial or a capillary, and the branch of brain cells that that feeds dies off, and then it happens again and again and again. Tiny little strokes happening all over the brain, eating up your memories eating up who you are. This is not necessary and this is reversible. So to keep blood cholesterols low, reduce the saturated fat in the diet, which is usually animal fat. 